rather than planning out every point along the path, I would say like, okay, what's the first thing we need to do? Let's just go there. Hey everyone, welcome to Creative Table. We are here today with our great friend and I would dare say mentor, Craig colleague. Johnson. Colleague, go. Yoda, there go. colleague, mentor, um, Craig Johnson of Matchstick fame um, here in Atlanta. They are an incredible brand identity house and do a lot of work for a lot of amazing companies. Highly recommend you check them out. Craig, thank you for being here, man. Thanks I know so much you, for having me, Kevin. Absolutely. You are, uh, I know you're a busy guy, but we appreciate your time. And I want, moving forward, I want to talk a little bit about, okay, solo or partnership? Yeah. Um, there's pros and cons. I think we had a, um, a friend of ours on the show. He said, you can go faster alone, but farther together. Mm. Um, so there's a lot to be said about each one of those paradigms. For you guys, you and Blake, I mean, you kind of fit together and, you, and you've, you've learned to to really, you know, be Bubba and Forrest. So <laughs> you just lean against me, I lean against you, right? And yeah. and, you, and you guys seem to really are, you know, going farther together. So can you speak a little about a little bit about yeah, how you, I'm, I'm, I mean, how, what goes into deciding, making that decision, maybe what pros and cons would be, and is there anything you want to apologize to Blake for? <laughs> yeah, um, there's yeah. a lot that I have apologized <laughs> him for over the years. But um, <clears throat> I have an amazing business partner and, and, and we have such a great, relationship and yeah. i'm so thankful for it and the longer we do this this year will be 18 years mm -hmm. that we've been in this business together um the more i realize that's the exception you know yeah more than the rule and i think but what i have seen over time i've seen some trends in what doesn't work out uh within companies and i think there's a couple different things i think one it's partnerships are better when you have complementary strengths and skills than the same Mm -hmm. People have the same skill and that, typically what happens is one person gets a little, it works a little harder. They're a little bit better. They start resenting the fact they feel like they're carrying the other half. And then eventually somebody ends up buying out one. It just doesn't work out. Um, and, and we happen to be, I'm, I'm more the business guy. He leads the creative team and all the work we do. He doesn't want to do my job. I can't do his job. And so, you know, we both kind of rely on each other in that mm -hmm. way, which is great. Um, and then I think that we have very much shared values and shared, um, you know, work ethic of what, how we want to work. So in one sense, we are both a hundred percent all in on this business. You know, yeah. there's nobody, not one of us is not working harder than the other. Sure. That said, we both have families. We both have young kids and we're going to, we're going to eat dinner at home, yep. you know, every night. It, you know, unless there's a, a, a rare exception, you know, mm -hmm. there's probably uh, two to th two, maybe twice a month that I wouldn't have dinner at home. Right. Right. Um, and so that's going to be the standard. So I think it would be difficult if one of us was a work till 10 o'clock every night and the other one was a work till five o'clock every day. I think that would be difficult. Or if one was all in and and but the other person was kind of halfway in but mm -hmm. looking for jobs on the side seeing if a better thing comes along yeah. i've had had a conversation just recently with somebody that formed a new partnership and has two different partners and feels like he's a lot more committed he's all in on this while they're still looking for side gigs and they're maybe you know could take a job somewhere so i think you got to be equally committed i think you got to have similar values as how the the role that you want work to have in your life mm -hmm. and i think you got to have complementary skills and i think that if those three things are in place now I wish I could say, you know, that I, I got, I, we got lucky, you know, we didn't sit down and say, all right, let's plan this out. It was just more like, right. Hey, we like each other. We get along. I think let's try to do a few things together and see right. what happens. And it just so happened to retroactively, I look back and I say, wow, we do have all those things that work in common together. And I think that's a big reason why we've been great business partners for a while. But, um, but I think that 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 you got to have the complementary skills, similar values, and and want work to have the same place in your life as the other person. Yeah, that's that's great. It's so true too. Um, so you launch out, you've got your your solo or your partnership going, and how much you know planning versus execution is there in the beginning? Would you say? I know as a brand identity house. I could I could imagine you emphasizing like it's you have to know who you are, who you're serving, where you're going. Mm -hmm. But I don't know 
you know, how you would respond to, oh, you got to have a business plan. You got to have your five year plan. You got to have your 10 year goals. Or yeah. is it just like, hey, niche down and hit the road? Um, what, what, what's important there to get going with? And what, is, what are some of the things that maybe are uh, just quicksand or, or speed bumps for people that don't really need to be addressed that so soon? Or what are your yeah, thoughts? Yeah, I, th I think some generally, I think you learn a lot more in execution than you do in strategy. Mm -hmm. So I'm not an anti strategy person, but I think early on, I think, I think vision is really important. Yep. So I think if you have a general vision, like, wow, we're, we're we get really excited about going there and rather than planning out every point along the path, I would say like, okay, what's the first thing we need to do? Let's just go there. Right. And then, cause a lot of times people sit around and plan and strategize and they do that for months but they don't have one customer. And mm -hmm. I think that, you know, there's a certain magic of just getting one customer saying that person, and I can put a price in front of this person. They agreed to it. I did the thing. They gave me the money. That's a beautiful We're thing. Yeah. We're in business. <laughs> yes. And, put my dollar on and the then, wall, it, and then you know? it's like, and then it's like, yeah. let's do that again. Okay. We did that. Great. Let's do it again. Can we do it a little bit bigger? Can we do, Oh, now this person came over. Yeah. Does that fit? Okay. Let's, let's try it out. Retrospectives. Like how can you learn from what we just did and how can we improve and, and, yeah. and make this process even smoother and build upon it? Right. Yeah. I mean, we I mean, still to this day have postmortems on every single project that we have. The mm -hmm. whole project team gets back together. Okay. What went well? What didn't go well? If we had to do this again, what would we change? Is there anything that we need to learn from this that we that that needs to be kind of institutionalized yep. within the organization? Yep. Uh, or was that just a one-time thing? Uh, or maybe it's just we need to have that on our radar, and if it comes up again, you know, let's let's remember. So your postmortems is that is there a policy where the team just knows like when a job is done, we have the postmortem on the on the third day or the or the Monday of the following week, or is it more like we schedule that? You guys schedule that every time. Yeah, the project um, custom like isn't done until you've done the postmortem. That's uh -huh. a step in the process. That's the, that's one of the last steps in the process. Mm -hmm. And so I think. But if how you, do you? When do you? Does everyone just know when it happens? Well, it's or, probably like everything in a project. Uh, the project manager makes it happen. So yeah, um, be intentional about that. That's yeah. Good. So I think having with any sort of creative person, you know, in order to I think really thrive. You need somebody who's, you know, making sure the train gets there on time mm -hmm. and stays on the rails. So for us, we have project managers. And I think that anytime I think, well, I'm going to just try to do this. And it's, this is just, I did this the other day. It was like a quick thing that a client needed. I'm like, it's going to happen in a week. I don't even need to involve a project manager. And then like, there was little things that I forgot. And I was like, this is why I need a project manager because mm -hmm. they will remember things that I don't remember. And, and so they're the ones that, you know, schedule the postmortem and mm -hmm. they make sure they set all the deadlines and they do handle all the logistical communication with the client. And mm -hmm. it, it really gives the freedom to the creatives to just be creative. Now it also gives them boundaries, right? It gives them guardrails that says, Hey, you are starting at this on Monday and I need you to deliver this by Wednesday. And mm -hmm. that is a hard deadline and, and you have to be able to hit that. And that's not a finished project in three days. The project may be, you know, a four month project. Yeah. But the project manager knows what has to be done the first three days and sets that deadline mm -hmm. for that for that creative so that because the project manager can see if we miss that deadline, we're going to miss the, the ultimate deadline. Mm -hmm. And we never miss those deadlines. And it's because those those project managers are excellent. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about building up, I guess, margin in the project or the work that you do so that you can hire those project managers or, or business you know, development guys when you need them. A lot of people might take their 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 money and invest it in, in in tech or gear or you know equipment, whereas you could take that and invest it in people mm -hmm. and you know resources. What's your philosophy around that? Like, who would be just high level? The, what's, 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 where's your first big expense go towards? Is it is it an office? Is it a computer? Is it a person, um, personnel or? Yeah. Team over. So I think you got to first know what kind of business are you in? Right. You know, if you're creative, mm -hmm. we're in a service business, right? So mm -hmm. it's hard for us to grow or to, you know, have meaningful increase in our revenue without hiring people. Mm -hmm. And I think we hire people. I, I, I love when we hire another creative because that's really more of a revenue generator than it is an expense. Because you, so you should be hiring someone when you know, 
there's enough that work there. They're going to pay for to themselves. To keep them busy. They're going to yeah. pay for themselves and they're going to pay help pay for me too. Right. Right. Um, I think the harder ones are paying for people that are not revenue generating. Those are mm-hmm. the, you know, the, the harder decisions. When we first hired a project manager, I don't think I was billing them to the project. And I had to quickly learn like, no, they are a part of the project, you know, and we set a percentage of every project. We say, okay, if this is what it's going to cost to get it done, we tack on X percent for what that's going to be for, I think for us, it's around 20% for our project management. Mm-hmm. Is, is that going to be exact for every project? No, but we know that, that we're going yeah. to need that margin. Um, and somebody said to me once, they said, I said, well, I don't know if I can charge for project management. And they said, well, do you think your clients would feel great if there wasn't a project manager involved? If you just said, all right, fine, we won't do, handle any project management and we'll cut that out of the fee, but I don't know about hitting deadlines and things like that. No, they're gonna absolutely <laughs> want project management as part of that. <laughs>